I'm Natasha Foot. And I'm Gerardo Fortuna. The subject we're going to be talking today is probably the most pressing issue when it comes to agricultural policy at the EU level. Natasha, do you reckon there's a topic more contentious, disputed, mm. controversial than common agricultural policy? Definitely controversial cap. That's, that's what it should be known as from henceforth. The EU's Common Agricultural Policy, or CAP as it's known, aims to support farmers and improve agricultural productivity, ensuring a stable supply of affordable food and that EU farmers are able to make a reasonable living while also safeguarding the environment. When the Common Agricultural Policy first saw the light of day in 1962, it was already clear that it would have had a big impact on the development of agricultural statistics in Europe, and that's because the implementation of the CAP requires statistics that were not only detailed and up-to-date, but also comparable in each member state. While it's true that agricultural spending is the largest individual part of the EU's total expenditure, this is because agricultural policy is handled by the EU directly, unlike some sectors such as transport or education, and this means that all funding for agriculture comes from the EU budget. Things are, have radically changed uh, since the presentation of the CAP proposal in, in uh, 2018 because, of course, Green Deal was unveiled and in the meantime, uh, I mean, we're, talk we're talking about a huge revolution. We need a policy that understands local needs and works for all, large and small, at all corners of the Union. And this is why we are trying to change our approach to rural development, not only in the common agricultural policy, but also through the European Green Deal. We cannot micromanage a whole continent from Brussels, but together we can set the direction of our common work. Our message to rural commun communities should be like this. If you choose to go green and digital, it will pay off. The Farm to Fork strategy is the EU's new flagship food policy. It aims to improve lifestyles, health and the environment, offering a comprehensive approach to food sustainability. Consumers play a key role in the fork end of the strategy and the strategy works to encourage consumers to choose a sustainable food option. I try to consume organic uh, when it's possible, but I think it's also important to look at the origin of the food because for me it doesn't matter to, to buy something organic if it comes from South America or super far away. So I prefer looking at the, the origin of the food than the, the fact that it's organic or not. Especially with the fact that, I mean, being organic is a, is a label and some products, like local products, can be kind of organic, they just don't have the label. Many consumers have changed their eating habits, spending more time at home cooking and are more interested in organic products but also would like to see more information on the origin of their food and the fairness of their production. Food for thought for the EU policymakers, as the Commission's Farm to Fork strategy currently seems far more focused on nutritional aspects when it comes to front-of-pack labelling. An unexpected statement the Agriculture Commissioner Janusz Wojciechowski made before the French Senate about the targets in the Farm to Fork strategy. And for the first time he suggested the possibility of revising the ambitious targets of the new food policy at a later stage, if anything goes wrong and particularly if food security is threatened. The Environment Commissioner Virginius Sienkiewicz argued the contrary saying that food security is no longer a major concern for the EU, while other challenges are dominating the European food system, such as food waste, overconsumption, obesity and its overall environmental footprint. As one of the sectors that stands to lose the most in climate change, the question is, what can the sector do to help mitigate and adapt to this new reality? And what support is on offer for the sector to deal with these new kinds of crises? We need to prepare the agriculture sector in order that is, of course, contributing uh, to uh, mitigating the climate change, in particular when we are talking about uh, the land management, but also not only the land management, which is mainly related to the production side, but also to the production of the food, uh, consumption of the food, waste management, which is also a big problem uh, when we are talking about uh, contribution to to climate change. 
Of course, these kind of changes don't happen overnight, and as much as you can try to preempt crises, sometimes it's simply not possible. But what kind of support is on offer for farmers in the EU for climate crises? The crisis reserve has not been used because uh, member states do not want it. Uh, somehow there is a mechanism obliging that if you use the crisis reserve means that there is a direct cut in cap payments. So it comes at a cost to use the crisis reserve. It's not free money. And that is the reason why the Parliament and the Member States do not want to activate the crisis reserve. Until the Commission will finally unveil its final act in the, in the context of the Farm to Fork, which is this framework on sustainable food systems that the Commission has planned to deliver before 2023, this is expected to be another arching framework, of course, that will provide a basis to ensure policy coherence at the EU and national level, also setting out general principles and requirements that will underpin the development of food legislation in food-related policies, including possible reviews of the existing acquis. The European lawmakers uh, in the European Parliament are negotiating for reaching an agreement on a common text uh, for, for the reform of the Common Agricultural Policy. As you probably know, the, the Common Agricultural Policy file is divided into these three pieces of legislation dealing specifically with uh, strategic plans, uh, horizontal government governance and common market organization, the, the CMO. Of course, Culture Minister uh, Maria Doceo Antunes. Our objective is to conclude the CAP negotiations which require a demanding timetable of discussion in order to obtain an agreement in the spring. This is the appropriate timing for implementing the CAP strategic plans in each member state from January 2023. Feel positive progress in, uh, in these outstanding issues like green architectures. It means that we are closer uh, to the end. So, you have to follow religiously our updates on uh, on uh, your active website from now Very on. <laughs> Top tip to the listeners is follow your <laughs> Of course. I mean, it's the only way to stay up to date. It's, it's useless <laughs> if you now circle on your, on your calendar the AgriFish Council of May just because Ulrike Müller or, or the Portuguese minister expect a deal before summer. Uh, so. You heard it here first, folks. Follow your active, listen to the podcast. <laughs>